Hello everybody, welcome to the Mothman Jones Movie Channel, I'm your host John Maffio, and welcome to my official Avengers spoiler video. Have you seen a dozen of them already from other channels? Well, here's another one! This video, as it seems pretty frank and blatantly obvious, is a video where I'm going to be discussing things that happened in the movie, everything about it. Um, so if you haven't seen the movie, you should probably see it first. Also, you get to watch as my v-neck gets deeper and deeper over the course of this video because this shirt will not stay up. But it came to my attention for some reason just now that over the past couple years, I've only been doing spoiler-related things for blockbusters in podcast form. So, I think, especially now with Stardust, it came, it came to mind that I should be doing something like this and integrating it with my YouTube channel. So, I went on Stardust and asked everybody who follows me out there to send me questions and reactions about Avengers Infinity War and I would react and therefore relay what you say into a discussion and we could also continue that discussion down below um, so without further ado I don't want to waste any more time this is gonna be a long video I can feel it first we have a pretty intriguing question from Steve Chaput or as he's known on Stardust Steve C50 I admit as I said in an earlier response I'm not that knowledgeable about the Soul Stone, but I don't know if that if it can contain all the souls that were taken. Was it just the Avengers, or do the souls of everyone who disappeared still exist there? If so, will the Avengers have to sacrifice themselves? We are literally diving into the ending of Avengers Infinity War here, but he brings up a good point. Um, we saw in the scene on Saw. This goddamn New York accent. Relating to the planet Vormir, where we have Thanos and Gamora and Red Skull, which blew my mind. Seven years later, we finally find out where he's been, and he's not in a great situation there. He's just watching people try to get the Soul Stone and all failing. Um, but I think uh, Gamora is stuck in the Soul Stone. I think there's a chance that she's going to come back. Um, and then relating to what Steve was saying... I think there is a pretty fair possibility that everybody's souls are in the Soul Stone. I don't know if there's a way, this is going to get really weird and nerdy, but maybe there's a way that the Avengers or somebody could travel into the realm of the Soul Stone and see millions and millions of alien races and human beings and some of the characters, or I guess all the characters who became dust, who are stuck there. Or, it would, I guess it would be more tragic and kind of what I wish would happen if... When they turn to dust, they just cease to be. Bye, Felicia. It seems really easy for audiences to figure out what's going on with these movie stories, and you can ultimately get some things right, but I do agree with the notion that the Avengers are going to have to make, the OG Avengers are going to have to make a sacrifice in order to get some, if not all, of the characters that dusted away back. Um, because I do think they're doing something here where they're trying to set up all the newer characters to carry on the MCU as a whole. Um, which means either all the Avengers hit the goal, or more realistically, Two or three, or even one has to go, and if I had to pick one, it would be Cap. For some reason, I see Tony Stark being like this retired Bruce Wayne Batman Beyond type deal, where he's around, but he's not doing anything, and he never will do anything unless it's called upon. Maybe they can do something Force Awakens related in 20 years. If they, we still have an MCU in 20 years, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like Kevin fighting it right now. 2032, I want Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 6. They got masterminds that are thinking up movies for the next... Two decades, and I, I don't know what I want for food later. Next, we have a question from Aaron Hizzy, um, film enthusiast on Stardust, and his question is, after the Avengers take down Thanos in the next movie, which, yeah, it's, spoiler alert, they're gonna conquer Thanos somehow, what villain do they fight next? How can they possibly up the stakes more than they already have? Um, I've read some comics, I'm reading comics now, I'm reading Amazing Spider-Man right now, leading into 800, um, with, like, it's like Carnage, Green Goblin, which is insane, but I don't know how you up the stakes from a Thanos. I mean, I think the only thing you could do from there is, instead of getting bigger, get more personal. Yeah, have a character like a Doctor Doom or a Norman Osborn. Galactus would be literal bigger, but I would like just per more personal stakes. If we're getting scrolls, apparently that's the direction to go, and having secret wars and stuff like that. Um, and I'm not going to go off on a tangent about secret wars, but there's a whole thing. Um, there's a lot of directions you can go, though, but personally, I think it would be cool to have Doctor Doom eventually be led up into being, you know, the guy. Next, we have Stephanie Gallardo, um, Minute Movie Pop, who asks, 
Which character's death would you change and why? Telling you the first time I saw this movie, I was just so in the moment that every time somebody went to dust or somebody died, I was like, huh, huh. The only one I really saw coming was Loki and kind of Vision. But Loki was like choreographed, like Force Awakens level, the way that he was doing what he was doing. Like, you have a knife behind your back trying to kill Thanos? No. I'm thinking about it right now, and I feel like all the deaths were pretty well executed. Shit. Heimdall's was kind of anticlimactic, but he did a pretty noble thing in sending Hulk with dark magic back to Earth, so I think that's a pretty cool way to go. Um, Loki was a pretty brutal way to go, even though I saw it coming. Vision's death, having been killed by the love of his life, and then by Thanos with the Time Stone, was perfect. And I loved the high dramatic nature of Gamora's death scene with Thanos literally crying because he really did love Gamora as he throws her off a cliff. This is tough. Peter Parker's death is one of the- I know he's gonna come back, but in the moment and even thinking now, it's one of those scenes that I'm never gonna forget because of how I felt in the moment, and Tom Holland's acting sells it in how he's a kid who has this spider sense flying off the roof like he knows what's coming, and he's just begging to live. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go, and then he just accepts it and says he's sorry. But it's not even his fault. But that's perfect Peter Parker dialogue, and then he goes, and it's like, oh! But yeah, to answer Stephanie's question, it would be Drax and Peter Quill, in the way they went. And then lastly, we have Austin Burke, the Birkinator, who acts as, when Strange basically gives up the Time Stone, which I believe he had to, and I would agree with you, to save Tony's life, what do you believe the end game is? Why is giving up the stone the one outcome that will save everyone? Pretty much asking what do you think the next movie will be about. So while Doctor Strange was doing his little saw montage thing, he saw over 14 million outcomes. And only one outcome was him giving up the stone, which is kind of crazy to think about. Like literally getting into the semantics and logistics of 14 million outcomes to a situation. you think there would be more than one where the stone is given up. Um, but... It, just because he gave the stone up doesn't mean they're going to succeed in this. But seeing as they have to, like, you know, resolve the story because it's so dire and dour and grim, apparently Tony Stark has to live for everything to turn out okay in this one outcome. And I think that also relates to the original Avengers, where they have to, they have to come back together, a la nostalgic feelings for Avengers 1, um, and just arcs having these characters come back together after breaking up in Civil War, making amends and bonding again to make an ultimate sacrifice to keep the universe going and probably giving up one or more of their own lives for it. I recall Steve's reaction where he says, our oldest souls trapped in the Soul Stone, and I think the Soul Stone is going to play a very important part in the next movie. We, s All right, we're getting into spoilers. This is all spoilers, so there is a set picture out there of the Battle of New York from 2012, the first Avengers movie. So, there might be time travel involved? Or they're using what they call BARF technology, which you see in the beginning of Civil War, where we see a very young Tony Stark seeing his parents go by before they get into the car crash and, you know, get killed by Winter Soldier. Because he's trying to demonstrate a point. What would you do differently if you knew that somebody you loved was leaving to go see the demise, you know? Um, but... There is something that's going to be really kooky that's going to be happening in Avengers 4, whether it's time travel or going into a weird dimension. Hawkeye and Ant-Man are going to be involved, I'm sure. But apparently the subtitle is going to be very indicative of what the story of this movie is. So when we find out that subtitle for Avengers 4, it's going to really open up a lot more possibilities to narrow down what's going to be happening, I guess, when we get that subtitle and the trailer and a description a synopsis. I think, ultimately, it's the original Avengers um, going to confront Thanos, but in confronting Thanos, they have to do something else, which is going to Vormir to find, I guess, not Gamora, but find a way to get to the Soul Stone, and going into the Soul Stone? I would want them to get really ridiculously nerdy for this movie. It's the last big movie for our original Avengers characters that started from 2008 to 2012 and form there. And that's it for all the Stardust reactions and questions. Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, helping start a discussion and a conversation. But now I'm going to get into things that I just want to personally pick out before we end this video. One, this movie is basically Thanos Infinity War, as people have said in other videos. This movie is his story. It's his ultimate arc. And ultimately, he does what he wants to do. And he literally goes to a porch 
watches the sun rise, and just smiles. Which apparently is how the comic ends, but it's a very fitting ending for this movie, seeing as he set out to do his goal, he fulfilled his goal, and that's it. Now he just gets to chill. Be a farmer, or whatever the hell he wants to do with the rest of his life. But it's not going to happen that way, because we know the Avengers is going to show up, but if he won for good... He would be satisfied. I think it's pretty funny how uh, Wong from Doctor Strange kind of just shows up and helps in the Battle of New York Part 2 with uh, Ebony Maw and a couple of those other children of Thanos. And then he's like, I have to protect the Sanctum Santorum. Um, bye! Did he blow away in the wind too? I guess we won't know until next time, but chances are he's sitting in the Sanctorum thinking, I made a good choice as he eats ice cream. But I like the way the story moves and just goes on like we start in the ship from the end of Ragnarok and Loki and Hemdall die and this movie is in part a big vengeance story for Thor because he wants to seek vengeance for the death of all of his Asgardian brothers and sisters and his literal brother Loki and his best friend Hemdall. We get a little scene with him and Rocky where he's just talking about all the death that he's suffered in his life and it's really it's really sad but I do again we, we switch from him we get those characters, and we have the Guardians who team up with Thor. Then we have um, Tony, Banner, Doctor Strange, and Wong, and Spider-Man shows up. And then we have um, Captain America, Black Widow, Sam, Vision, Wanda. And then we have Wakanda, where they all meet up. We have subsections that eventually all almost coincide together, um, where we end on Wakanda and Titan for the two big ending action sequences. I really enjoyed more on the second viewing, the journey with Thor, Groot, and the Rocket, and their little interplay, and seeing Peter Dinklage being a really big dwarf, but I really liked his character, even though it seemed like it, it comes out of nowhere, it develops and further expands the mythology of Thor as a character, and with this place where the, these weapons are forged in the Stormbreaker, which is an ultimate weapon. By the way, I have not screamed, I didn't think I would do this for Thor, but I had the most audible moment, besides when Peter Parker dies, when Thor shows up on Wakanda and does that little spinning thing and lights up like he does in Ragnarok and he just takes a Stormbreaker and just <laughs> in juxtaposition with Alan Silvestri's score with the, 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 the Avengers theme building up in that moment swelling up. It was like, wow, all of the action in this movie was great. I'm just going to jump around really because that's all I can do right now. But I mean, the end battle on Titan, seeing Thanos utilize all the stones throughout the movie, but especially in that sequence when he was fighting Doctor Strange and just... I can't even explain it, but the way that their interplay in, like, the, their game of chess, where Doctor Strange would use one thing with the portals, and then he would use the gauntlet to, like, take in all of whatever it was, if it was fire or, like, debris, and then just, like, stumbling it back out, taking parts of the planet, the moon behind him, and just throwing debris on them. Um, all of that was great. And then you have the moment where they're about to take the gauntlet off, and Peter Quill, rightfully so... Because his character gets emotionally unstable. Um, hearing that Gamora's dead, ruining the moment where they could have had the gauntlet taken off, and then after that, everything goes to shit. Also, seeing Spider-Man fling through the streets of New York for a few seconds was some of the glorious few seconds of this entire movie for me, being super big fan of the first two Raimi movies from back in the day. The, the only really good Spider-Man movies and a couple of the best superhero movies of all time, period. Don't at me. Um... But it was really nice seeing him swing through the city and actually interact in the city of New York, where I think he should be, even though apparently this character is doing different things in his separate trilogy of movies. I got to hand it also to Alan Silvestri, who really had some great motifs in this movie and great uses of the theme, especially when Cap, bearded Cap, who I'm all about, shows up and you hear the Avengers theme pop in when he's behind the train. Um, when Thor shows up, like I mentioned before, his little sad theme. That I think it's the Thanos theme, but it shows up in the end credits right before the actual credits. But the credits are usually the credits where we have like super fun artsy thing. But now it's just font, font, font. Avengers Infinity War fade, and you hear a little piano. Boo 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 doo. And then no mid credit scene. And everybody was like, "Oh, what?" And then you get to the after credit scene. And you see two more characters fade away, and you're like, "Oh, what?" But then you got Captain Marvel, which this is a great, smart way to get people to see Captain Marvel next year, I'll tell you that. And I really can't wait to see how they integrate what she's been doing this whole time. Why can't she have been helping 
Like, why? Where is she? How? Like, so many questions. Who is Gamora? Where is Gamora? Why is Gamora? <laughs> this has been my Avengers Infinity War spoiler video. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for everybody on Stardust who reacted and sent me questions. I can't wait to do this again, hopefully sooner than later. Um, for anybody who wants to continue the discussion down below, let's keep on. Let's keep the conversation going. Anything that I didn't talk about, because there's so much to talk about in this movie. I can talk about this movie for five hours. But um, you're going to do so much in a time and a day. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, check out my social medias, my Stardust, as mentioned. And that's it. I'm John Matthew, a.k.a. Mothman Jones. We only have to wait one year for Avengers 4, so we only have to cry in a field position for a little over 365. That's it. We can handle it, us adults. You kids, you, you got school and shit. Don't, don't, don't complain. But us adults, we can feel this moment right now. Really. Soak it in. And then release it onto the world. On Twitter and Facebook in, you know, whatever way you see fit. See you guys next time.